which begs the question, how can there be hope for uh, our planet, for people, with all the issues we're going to be facing, whether it's water, climate, wars, disease, famine, poverty. How can we face all this stuff if we can't get along? And I really think that a lot of the disruptions are done deliberately by whatever is out there to keep people from uniting. Because if we're united, I mean, there's nothing we can't accomplish. But if you keep people running around and arguing and fighting, uh, you know, it's it only benefits a very few. Now, if you've been watching our video up till now, and not just listen to me talking about things, you will see that we have a large variety of videos. You can find all these in full uh, detail on our YouTube channel. That's how we've ended up with 8,000 plus videos. And I tell you, I can't imagine trying to make a 3 minute or even a 10 minute video to show what British Columbia our province is about. There is so much to see in this province, so much to experience. But the same thing can be said even for one area, like if we're going to do a video on Kelowna or Victoria, or for that matter, it's Los Angeles or Key West, Florida, whatever. There are just so many different things that I cannot imagine bringing it down to just a very short bunch of snippets about whatever and say that that defines our area, that defines our province. Or even talking with politicians that, you know, a two or three minute soundbite or let alone a 30 second soundbite defines a politician or what they're about. So my videos tend to go on. They are longer. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, really ticks me off. Like I said, that $2.6 million that British Columbia spent is really a lot of money and for a fraction of that cost say like 10 percent you'd be able to deliver videos from british columbia for a full year there's a lot more to british columbia than wineries and uh, you know old growth forests and stuff and uh, something else that we've learned from our youtube channel and it, it wasn't even learning i mean i if you go back on our videos you'll find that from the beginning i was talking about uh when we started making our travel videos and uh, heading out to the Caribbean. Well, I saw people afraid in airplanes. So then you make videos about airplanes, about flights, how smooth that is, how good the service is. You make videos about airports because people that are going to a new destination might, you know, feel more comfortable if they see stuff about that. We dissected resorts, showing the pools, the restaurants, the shows, the beaches, uh, then because different people go for different things and believe it or not down in the Caribbean we've encountered people coming from Europe bird watching or fishing then you start doing videos on those things and first of all it's not rocket science and second it doesn't have to cost a gazillion cent dollars the experts always try to make you think that everything is so hard so difficult Everything needs a lot of decision. I mean, I love hearing when politicians are talking about stuff and they, it's tough, it's difficult, it's hard, you know, about economy, about this, about that. And man, it must be really tough and hard because look at the mess that they have created. But the same thing goes for uh, professions. And, you know, I've seen on local uh, cable broadcasts about photography and, you know, professional photographers. Well, I tell you. Today with the uh, equipment available, and we're talking about now digital cameras, really at a reasonable price, that can take gazillion shots. It's not rocket science to take phenomenal shots. As a matter of fact, when I was still uh, checking out photography, or even now, some of the best shots taken are by amateurs. Because guess what they have? They have passion. They love what they're doing. They're hobbyists, and their hobby is taking pictures. They love their camera. They love getting out, getting the shots, and they get giddy like I do when they get something right. Professionals are guided by money more often than not. You know, uh, they're not going to do something if the money's not right. Now, this is picking grapes. I don't support wineries. 
Uh, I think wineries are for very few people. I think wineries on the whole, when they're getting involved in it, these estate wineries and all that stuff, they have money. Often it's the placing of the rich. They don't need government support. They don't need government funds. I think that'd be money much better spent at family farms where people are growing produce that kids Beautiful should be eating, grapes. should be supplied to schools for luncheon yeah, no, programs. Dude. But these are table grapes. Cindy and I went out to pick table grapes. One thing leads to another. So beautiful. We're picking table grapes, and guess what we found? This green praying mantis. It became a part of our videos. It's a part of British Columbia. It's an invasive species that you can find around. We have filmed praying mantis before, but this one was so gentle, stuck around, that suddenly my impression of them completely changed i mean you know i it's almost portrayed like this bloodthirsty creature all this she was beautiful she was gentle it's a learning experience became a part of our videos and by classifying it as a praying mantis it attracts people that are into insects into praying mantis nature and all that stuff it's part of british columbia in the bigger scheme it's part of the Okanagan on a smaller travel tourism scheme, but it's also an insect. This is down in the Kootenays near Christina uh, Lake. As a matter of fact, it's between Christina Lake and uh, Grand Forks, British Columbia. Only perhaps not even three, four miles out of Grand Forks. And usually there are mountain sheep to be found there. I think the government would be far better off in travel and tourism promoting things like this and the wineries and golf and conventions because those are everywhere. With the sheep. Beautiful big animals. And I talk about this. Now my talk doesn't just come from the fact of, well this is what I like and everyone should like it. The talk comes also from people that we encounter on our travels which is something else that I do often. I talk to people, yeah. especially when I detect that they're outside of Canada, from outside of Canada. What brings them here? Yeah. So just about where she is, Cindy. And if you point it towards the fish here, they got a nest. And whether it's in the Okanagan, on Vancouver Island, in the Fraser Canyon, when we talk with people... You think that has spawned already? They're not looking yeah. for wineries. This They're not coming nice. from Europe over to experience our selection of wines. So gonna, they want to see nature. Fish. Yeah. Where those other fish are on the beach. Yeah. And we're going to cut its tail off and throw it back over because that just shows that this salmon's already been through the fence and counted. Yes. So when the tail's cut off and it's over there, so the fish that have died on this side, it won't get counted with those. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're already dead, we're not killing live yeah. fish. Right. Right. Yeah. This is dead, so it's more stats, right? Yeah. We learn a lot. No, we're not going to bother them at all. We do not bother nature. Quite often when we're filming it, we'll film for a while and then leave without even touching or disturbing it. My favorite thing is if they don't even know we're there and they're acting normal and behaving just like they should without human interference. Where? Skinny one. Yep. There's a rainbow trout in that bunch. A rainbow trout. Following the salmon up the river, eating their eggs. Now, another thing I gotta tell you about our videos is that our videos have been used by commercial entities, which we have been compensated for. Everything from National Geographic, Animal Planet, major US networks, Discovery Channel, uh, uh, we've had CBC Television in Canada use our videos. And the videos are taken with consumer equipment or pro-consumer. I use a Sony AX2000 camera. We have several of those and Cindy uses the PJ series. We have the 650, 170, but we've always updated our cameras. And right now we are considering going into 4,000 lines of resolution, ultra high definition, but I still have some hesitation on that because first of all, I like to keep things in a pers 
perspective that anyone can do what we're doing and get this kind of quality if you're interested in it. But the other thing is that I realize that our videos are watched in some 160, 200 countries around the world and not everyone has the same internet speed, the same devices. So uploading large files can defeat the purpose. I found this out about Canada not long ago, uploading files to a uh, anti-pipeline protest site about our videos to do with the pipelines and people have dial-up service. I couldn't believe it. In Canada, dial-up service? Give me a break. I mean, instead of spending money on bombs blowing up in the Middle East, Harper should be spending on making sure that all of Canada is connected. And maybe, holy smokes, talk about a socialist idea, internet should be free to people. It shouldn't be something that corporations are uh, gouging us with because Canada has ridiculously high prices for our uh, internet, our phones and stuff like that with really poor service. But as you can see from nature and different types, different seasons, which attract, again, different viewers, our videos are about everything.